Hi, I'm Carol Andrews for this special episode of Southwest TV News. Over the next half hour, we'll be counting down the top 10 stories of 2012. Kicking things off in at number 10, 2012 was an election year across the province for municipalities. And here in Swift Current, several new faces were sworn in on City Council. The newly elected members of Swift Current City Council recently participated in an official swearing-in ceremony in Chambers. With Justice Tim Keene officiating, one by one, each councillor read the oath of office and signed the official documentation. Followed by Mayor Jared Schaefer, who was presented the chain of office for his second term. And with the official ceremony completed and training in the coming weeks for the newly elected members of council, Mayor Schaefer has the following goals ahead. We've got uh, a hearing on, uh, on annexation and, and boundary alteration at the end of November. We're hoping to uh, uh, hear some positive news on, uh, uh, on hopefully uh, being chosen uh, as a site for SAS Power, so we'll be waiting with, uh, a little bit with bated breath on that. But I think going forward, it's, uh, our, our real agenda is going to be economic growth and how we grow this region. And, you know, the other thing that I think has been a constant theme is we've got to keep working on customer service. You know, we've got our residents that have lots of concerns and questions, and we've got to make sure that, uh, you know, we're, uh, we're improving at the service delivery that we offer them as well. Objectives, which new and past councillors are ready to address as well, with Pat Friesen hoping to focus some attention on business promotion and attraction. When it comes to regional growth and development, that's very key is to um, meet the business interests and, and we need to um, promote investment and we need to create jobs. So um, uh, working with the business community is certainly a good first step. While Councillor Dennis Perot has a broader area of concern over the next four years. I want to see more business, businesses choose Swift Current. I want to see more families choosing Swift Current from around the world. I want to see people continue to come from from every different walk of life in every different country to, to bring so much more to that table and to make us that truly multicultural community that I know we are. And effective October 24th, both mayor and councillors will see a pay raise for their efforts. The new pay scale will see the mayor receiving approximately $50,000 per year or 42% of the CAO salary. While each city councillor will be paid approximately $17,500 annually or 35% of the mayor's salary, a decision which Schaefer stands by. Yeah, for sure. It, it's, uh, it's a part of the position. It was something that was done uh, uh, not starting uh, until there was election because, uh, I mean, anybody had the opportunity to run and uh, changes could, could happen. And, uh, you know, what all it does is bring uh, um, compensation for city council in line with other comparable cities, just like uh, we often do with, uh, with other communities. And um, I think now at this point in time, it, uh, it more fairly reflects uh, the amount of work and effort that's put in by, by those individuals. The newly elected Swift Current City Council will regroup in chambers for their first meeting on November 13th. Great Plains College continues to expand on its course offerings. And in our number nine story, a new nursing degree program is in the spotlight. The Cypress Health Region, Great Plains College, SIAST, and the University of Regina have come together in a partnership to deliver the Saskatchewan Collaborative Bachelor of Science in Nursing program to Great Plains College students in Swift Current. Starting in September of 2013, eight seats will launch the four-year nursing degree program through a theory and clinical setting, with some aspects of the course offered through distance education, a program which is pleasing to the Cypress Health Region. Again, we know that people tend to stay and settle where they've learned and this gives us an opportunity as a health region to really start to engage students very early on in their careers uh, to influence the decisions of where they may choose to practice. And you know, I really believe that nurses who train in a rural setting really will be well prepared to work anywhere in this province, but in particular in our rural communities. An overall initiative which brings together key partners with a common goal of training individuals to fill the needs of the local and provincial labor force, including SIAST, which has a 42-year history of providing nursing education in the province. Our students uh, get jobs. Um, actually, we have a 98 percent uh, employment rate, so once they graduate, they're pretty much guaranteed a job. Anyone that wants a job will get a job, uh, and, and we value the strong partnerships we have with industry in making our program such a success. And for the host campus, Great Plains College, the launching of the new nursing degree program continues to put the educational institution on the cutting edge of course offerings. So I'd like to think that this is a key step 
in, in, in laying groundwork for what I would like to think is going to be a considerable amount of new programming coming down the pipe in the next two to three years, yes. And, the, and not only that, but the nature, the model of partnership in the way that it's delivered. The Saskatchewan Collaborative Bachelor of Science Nursing Program will see eight seats filled starting in September of 2013 and replicated each year thereafter. With students receiving clinical training on site at the Cypress Regional Hospital and possibly within other healthcare settings across the region. Wishing the citizens of Swift Current the very best of the holiday season and into the new year from Mayor Schaefer, City Council, and staff of the City of Swift Current. Wishing you and yours a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from the management and staff of Stuke Pharmacy and Leader. Wishing you the best this holiday season and into the new year from the board, management and staff of Innovation Credit Union. Holiday greetings from the Cypress Health Region. On behalf of our 1,700 member team of staff, management, physicians and board of directors, I would like to extend our best wishes to the residents of the Southwest during this joyous time. It's a time for families and friends to get together and enjoy the spirit of the season. May 2013 be a year of health, happiness and prosperity for you and yours. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from the Cypress Health Region. In at number 8 is the Highway 1 and 37 intersection near Gull Lake, which has seen a number of accidents over the years, including two fatalities in 2012. Scenes such as this are a common occurrence at the intersection of Highway 1 and 37 near Gull Lake. This two-car collision occurred this past week with no serious injuries reported. However, two fatalities occurred on November the 10th, near the same area following a car semi-collision. Accidents which officials with the town of Gull Lake feel could be prevented. According to the town's mayor, the community has made its concerns heard to the province and will continue to do so with a meeting plan next month with the Ministry of Highways. I know one thing we wanted to see was uh, an enforced uh, 80 kilometer an hour uh, uh, reduced speed through there because right now it's advisory, like it's posted in yellow. That was looked at in the report. Uh, it wasn't... Um, Rejected, but I think their thought was uh, they thought that it would uh, cause some traffic congestion through there. Provincial officials indicate they're aware of the concerns raised by local residents and are always keeping an eye on frequent collision areas across Saskatchewan, including the total of 13 collisions which have occurred at this intersection since 2007, as shown in this data provided by SGI. Meanwhile, according to the Ministry of Highways, there have been steps taken in the past several years to address the issue. Most recently, we did a installed a, an acceleration lane. Um, I think it's uh, northbound on Highway 37 to eastbound on on Highway 1. Um, there's also um, uh, there's a left hand, um, both left and right hand turning lanes there. There's um, um, you know the intersection is is lit, like it's illuminated, um, and then there's the uh, the flashing yellow. Um, lights in, in advance of the intersection that, that uh, warn motorists of an oncoming intersection. Um, it is, you know, one of those things too, where um, uh, you know, in addition to the engineering that you can you can put into the intersections like these two, is you know, I think people have to understand as well that that driver behavior plays a really important role in traffic safety as well. And although Gull Lake's mayor knows a solution to the traffic problem won't happen overnight, he keeps holding on to the belief that a lower traffic speed is a start. I mean, some people have said. You know, call for a overpass, but I mean that's not realistic for there at you know, 30 to 50 million. I think it was for to put an overpass in, but um, I, I do think we have to look at doing like the mandatory 80 uh, slowdown. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Highways is holding firm on its stance with the current speed limit for the area. There was a speed study done. Uh, in that area back in March, and um, I think the consultant that performed the study concluded that the the 110 kilometer speed limit was appropriate at that time. And uh, you know that's uh, another thing to uh, that's important to note too is that uh, uh, the posted speed limit in any location is the the uh, 
maximum speed under ideal driving conditions and certainly whenever there's uh, anything that reduces visibility whether it's snow or rain or fog or if there's uh, um, you know winter driving conditions like pavement frost or snow on the road or things like that 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 people have to adjust their speed accordingly. What are your thoughts on the junction of Highway 1 and 37 near Gall Lake? Is this a problem area and what is the ideal solution from your standpoint? Send us your comments by email or on Facebook. All the best this holiday season and into the new year from the management and staff of Pinnacle Financial Services in Swift Current. Wishing you the best this holiday season and into the new year from Yogi Hugo Bear, MLA for Wood River. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from Gus, Louie and George at the Case Steakhouse and Motel. Book your Christmas party or New Year's celebration today. Wishing you and yours a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from David Anderson, Member of Parliament for Cypress Hills Grasslands. Wishing you the best this holiday season and into the new year from the town of Maple Creek, Southwest Saskatchewan's hump for holiday shopping and dining. Continuing on with a countdown at number seven, this story involves two BC men who were sentenced for their involvement in Saskatchewan's largest drug bust. Troy Ernest Swanson and Brock Ernest Palfrey, both of Vernon, BC, will spend time in jail following a judge's ruling in Court of Queen's Bench on November 30th in Swift Current. 26-year-old Swanson is sentenced to 10 years and 248 days. Palfrey, also 26 years of age, will be in jail for 16 years and 258 days for their roles in Saskatchewan's largest drug bust. Between December of 2009 and October 2011, approximately 1,370 kilograms of cocaine, 790,000 ecstasy pills, and 60 pounds of marijuana were imported from the U.S. across the Montana-Saskatchewan border and then exported back to the states through B.C., valued at approximately $200 million. Swanson, who was arrested on March 26 of 2010 near Swift Current with 151 kilograms of cocaine in the trunk of his vehicle, was a simple courier driver. Swanson did not modify vehicles or go independently on his trips, and was released on $75,000 cash bail with strict conditions. His involvement in the drug trade ended at that time, and he obeyed all of the court's terms. During the court proceedings, it was noted that Swanson transported approximately 495 kilograms of cocaine over a series of six trips from the Montana-Saskatchewan border to B.C. between December 15th of 2009 and March 26th of 2010. Swanson, who has no previous criminal record, pled guilty to the charges, which included possession of cocaine and possession of cocaine for the purpose of trafficking. Defense counsel had requested a sentencing of six to eight years, while the Crown sought a 15-year term. In the end, Justice Keene sentenced the 26-year-old Swanson to 11 years minus time served. Meanwhile, Brock Ernest Palfrey, who was described by the Crown as the kingpin behind the operation, received a much stiffer penalty. Palfrey was the instigator behind the operation, which involved the arrangement of pickup of the drugs from California and Washington State, to the hiring and training of the drivers who would then transport the illegal drugs, and the modification of the vehicles later used to transport the drugs across the border. In Palfrey's case, he was charged with seven criminal counts dating back to his initial arrest in March of 2010. Then his involvement of restarting the drug trafficking between January and October of 2011, and his final arrest in Vernon, B.C. on October 1, 2011. Palfrey's defense had asked for a sentence of 15 years, while the Crown pushed for 25 years with delayed parole for 10 years. Justice Keene's final ruling came about from considering the extensive amount of drugs being transported, the fact that Palfrey breached a court order to not have access to a cell phone or internet, and the fact that even while incarcerated in the Regina Correctional Center, he continued to try and organize another scheme involving new people into his plan. Therefore, Justice Keene sentenced Palfrey to 18 years less time served, which works out to 16 years and 258 days, with no delay on being eligible for parole. 
Project Feral was an undercover sting operation involving 100 law enforcement officers from across North America, including investigators in L.A., Great Falls, Montana, Vancouver, the interior of B.C. and southwest Saskatchewan, and involved the arrest of nine male suspects from B.C., Saskatchewan and Alberta, along with the seizure of drugs, cash, vehicles and all-terrain units. Project Feral was slated as the largest drug bust in Saskatchewan's history and one of the largest in Canada. Wishing you the best this holiday season and into the new year from the management and staff of Living Sky Casino. Wishing you and yours a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from Mayor Sharon Dickey, Council and staff of the Town of Shonovan. All the best this holiday season and into the new year from the management and staff of Diamond Energy Services in Swift Current. Amongst the hustle and bustle of the holidays, try to spend some extra time with your family. Whether it's reading by the fire after a big meal, playing a game with grandparents or venturing outside to just play in the snow. On behalf of the Chinook board and staff, I would like to wish you a joyous, fun-filled holiday season and best wishes for the new year. Christmas is upon us once again, and with it comes a flurry of activities that this season brings. As we take a moment to still our hearts and reflect on the events of the past year, may you be filled with peace and joy this holiday season. Christmas is the greatest story ever told. Christmas is about God's love for us, expressed through the birth of His Son, the baby Jesus. As we celebrate with family and friends, let us remember to show His love and compassion to those around us. On behalf of my wife Marilyn, family and office staff, have a blessed Christmas and a wonderful New Year. Our number six story of the year involves the active weather of the summer of 2012, which saw numerous tornado watches and warnings across the southwest. Across Saskatchewan, residents have experienced a hot and more humid than normal summer season, accompanied by thunderstorms and in some cases tornado activity. And with weather warnings issued more frequently this year than last summer, Environment Canada is keeping a close eye on the weather patterns across Saskatchewan. Well, I mean, it certainly has been a, a rock and roll on time there in Saskatchewan. I mean, it is, you, you rarely go through a summer without some active weather. I mean, you do have quiet years. I, I think in terms of when you look at what is su summer severe weather, in terms of tornado events, I mean, you typically see in Saskatchewan about a, a dozen tornadoes. I think there's been at least double that this uh, this year. And a uh, number of hail events are up and wind events. Uh, my gosh, it's almost as if nature is throwing everything at uh, you it could possibly do uh, in terms of microbursts and hailers and twisters and even gully washers, these, these heavy doses of rain in a short period of time, funnel clouds, plow winds. It's been a whole litany of, um, of extreme uh, events. Phillips says the prime tornado season in Saskatchewan runs from June through mid-August. And with a hot weather trend forecast for the weeks ahead, we're likely to see additional storm warnings in effect. And although summer storms can bring some breathtaking light shows in the sky thanks to the vast skyline across the province, Phillips reminds you to play it safe and leave the storm chasing to the experts. I mean, uh, people chase, scientists chase storms to learn about them. We want to improve our science, our forecasting to, to make people um, aware of uh, and improve the, the forecast. Uh, but um, I think uh, those yahoos that are oh, Sunday uh, storm chasers uh, only add to the, to the risk, not only to themselves, but to other people and to the experts who are, who are chasing. The experts know what to do in those kind of events. They know how to read the sky and to, uh, and to see what's an ominous cloud and what's a rotating cloud and, and what could possibly occur. And they're, they're measuring them, they're taking observation, they're putting their life at risk, and not only just in the, the way weather itself, but in the driving. Uh, my advice is to leave that to the experts uh, and enjoy on the film that you see on it uh, or from a safe point in uh, indoors, uh, uh, well protected because as they say, these are powerful events that um, 
that can be deadly at times. According to the latest data from Environment Canada, a hotter and drier than normal August is forecast for southwest Saskatchewan. Well, this brings to a close part one of our countdown. Join us again next time as we make our way to the number one story of 2012. For Southwest TV News, I'm Carol Andrews.